Clownfish and the Blue Tank family. Clownfish are quite fascinating marine creatures. It is such a sight to see groups of clownfish swimming in amongst an anemone. Little do you realize that there is a pecking order that has been established, whereby the most dominant clownfish in the group will be ranked above the rest. Clownfish are hermaphrodites, which means they can change gender. At birth, they are gender neutral. The most dominant clownfish in a group of clownfish, or harem, will become the female. The next dominant will be the male. The rest of the clownfish in the group will have to establish a rank amongst themselves. Clownfish will continue to squabble over each other for dominance by nipping at each other. The sign of submission to the more dominant clownfish is a shake or vibration on its side. Not all clownfish from the same clutch or group stay in the same anemone for the rest of their lives. After a pecking order or rank has been established, some clownfish may wander off to find a new group to join or a new anemone. Reef hobbyists have tried to replicate the natural environment of a clownfish harem with limited success. This has often to do with a variety of factors. That is why clownfish have been recommended by hobbyists to remain in pairs. In order to create a clownfish harem, a well-established tank with an abundance of anemones prior to introducing the clownfish is an important part of the success of a clownfish harem tank. Looking after clownfish from the same clutch or same group of eggs tend to have a high success rate. Clownfish in groups can become quite aggressive if there are limits to the amount of water volume, amount of food, and protection such as anemones and crevices for hiding spaces. Clownfish are demersal spawners. This means that they lay their eggs on a substrate or surface, which can either be a rock, aquarium glass, or clay pots. Clownfish have a potential to breed at around one and a half to two years of age, depending on environmental factors. A female clownfish will lay between 100 to 1,500 eggs approximately every two weeks. The clownfish eggs then hatch between 8 to 10 days later. If properly fertilized and cared for by the male, clownfish eggs will survive until they hatch. Once the female has laid her eggs, the male clownfish cares for the eggs, fanning them with his fins and using his mouth to rasp away algae. He watches over the eggs closely. Even though clownfish are generally good at raising their own babies, a few circumstances and environmental stress may lead the male clownfish to eat their own eggs. It is generally the male since he is the only one tending to the nest. With success, what will hatch are tiny clownfish larvae, which are about 3 millimeters in length. The newly hatched larvae, however, require special feeding and care for continued survival. In the wild, baby clownfish in its larvae form feed on floating zooplankton and phytoplankton. The most common type of food fed to clownfish larvae by clownfish breeders are live and cultured zooplankton called rotifers. They are microscopic aquatic creatures that eat algae and in turn provide some nutritional value to the clownfish larvae. It is one of the most difficult challenges to breed clownfish.
Blue tanks are one of the most popular marine fish. These blue tanks are known as dory, based on a film, Finding Dory. This type of fish is often kept with clownfish to try and replicate their peaceful relationship and contrasting colours of orange and blue. Blue tanks may also be referred to other names such as the Royal Blue Tang, Regal Tang, Hippo Tang, or their scientific name, Perocantharus hepatus. Blue tanks are considered to be saltwater fish, and there are many different types of blue tank species. Regal tanks are not difficult to spot, thanks to their blue colour, a distinct yellow tail and black platelet style design which make them attractive and popular. True blue tangs are often confused with the doctor fish and ocean surgeon fish as these species appear similar to each other. This fish may appear flat and circular in shape. They have a snout and small scales. Blue tangs may appear harmless, but they show their sharp and poisonous tail to defend against predators if they feel threatened or in danger. Also, adult blue tangs will show their dark blue and violet colour when they feel stressed. Blue tangs can grow up to 12 inches or 30 centimetres in length and they could possibly live up to 20 years in captivity. Regal tangs are native to coral reefs. They could be discovered in the Pacific Ocean and Indian Oceans. These fish are known to be ocean swimmers and to prefer to swim for long distances. Blue tangs like to live in pairs or they prefer to swim in large groups. They are best cared in reef tanks with a great volume of water. Tanks no smaller than 100 gallons with adequate swim space. This is to ensure blue tanks are healthy and happy in their reef environment. A reef tank that is confined in space would give the blue tank stress and possibly decrease the blue tank's life expectancy. In reef tanks, they are best introduced into its environment at the same time as other tank species. However, blue tanks can become quite aggressive and territorial to other tank species. They are predominantly herbivores and they actively roam the surface for coral reef in search of algae. Algae is part of their staple diet and they also consume tiny aquatic creatures called plankton. While algae is their main source in the wild, tangs in captivity will take meaty foods such as mysis and brine shrimp. They can be fed dry algae sheets, which can also be soaked with supplements to increase their nutritional value. Some reef hobbyists also soak them with fresh garlic in order to build the blue tank's immunity from disease such as ick. Blue tanks play an important part within the reef ecosystem. They help remove algae from coral reef by using their sharp teeth to nip away algae. Without the help of blue tanks, algae would inundate coral reef and affect the entire food chain. Although Royal Blue Tanks are listed on the International Union for Conservation of Nature to be the least fish species of concern, there is grave concern that this fish is being targeted by the aquarium trade. Experts believe that many thousands of blue tanks are being removed from the wild each year to be sold in the aquarium trade, which threaten the blue tank population. There is high demand for these fish, in particular, 
after the release of the films Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Blue tanks have been unsustainably harvested, leading to a decline in the blue tank population. They are not easy to raise in captivity. However, breeding blue tanks in captivity is a step forward protecting them and reducing over-exploitation of this fish species. <laughs>